Okay, okay. <clears throat> well, that's the Everly Brothers. We were playing the Everly Brothers. Why were we playing the Everly Brothers here on Aloha United We Stand, which, uh, which airs at 12 noon every Thursday? It's because we have an Everly brother right here, <laughs> Jim Everly. Do you have brothers? I, I do. I have two. An older one and a younger one. Do they sing? Uh, none of us sing. <laughs> <laughs> and we have uh, Jordana Ferreira. I never met her Jordana. I didn't like. Uh, and both of these guys are from uh, Patch. Uh, let's see. Jordana is the Oahu coordinator, and uh, Jim Everly is the uh, preschool open doors program manager. Okay, so I guess we ought to uh, investigate in our time here together, you guys, what Patch does. What does Patch do? Well, uh, we do a lot of things. Our, our, our mission is to advance the, uh, the quality and access of child care for all of the children of Hawaii. Uh, so we, have, we manage several different programs, uh, one of which is the Preschool Open Doors program, and then uh, the resource and referral program where people can call in and get referrals for um, licensed providers. Uh, in addition, uh, we, we run several other programs that all uh, coincide with our, our mission. Okay, so I'm, I'm a, a parent of a young child, say a preschool age child. What is that? How, how old am I if I'm preschool? Is um, preschool is usually four to five, sometimes three years old, depending on whether they can accept that child, um, but usually three to five years of age. Can I come to you? I say, hi, Patch. Hi, Jordana. Um, can you help me? Um, wh what's that conversation like? You're going to be asking me if I qualify? No. Um, so if you're looking for preschool, basically anybody can apply for preschool. So what we'll do if you call us is we'll ask a few questions about, you know, what type of care you're looking for. If it's preschool, what areas do you want it in? Do you want full-time, part-time care? Um, specific questions about your child, what you're looking for, and then we'll send you a list that's tailored to your needs. A list of schools? Of preschools, yeah. And then what you'll do from that point is contact all of those preschools, try to set up interviews with them, see if they have any openings for your child, and then from there you can move forward with the enrollment process um, if it's a good match for your family. Okay. Now and if they qualify, they can, uh, they'll also give them information about tuition assistance, which is the program I operate. Uh, the Department of Human Services program, Preschool Open Doors. Um, <clears throat> so we're helping... So you're not both with Patch? Yes. You are? Yes. So it, it, we're, we're under, it's all under the umbrella of Patch. So okay. it's the Resource and Referral Program along with Preschool Open Doors. So uh, the Resource and Referral, if somebody calls in and uh, let's say they're, they're qualified or the child is age qualified for my program, uh, they can give them that information and tell them how to apply. Uh, if they're not qualified for a program, they also give them resources for financial assistance for other programs where their child will qualify for. Well, so uh, and it's, it's cash money. I mean, you have funds mm -hmm. that you assistance. dedicate, and you, do you pay the, the family or do you pay the school? Uh, we pay the families, okay, and then the families, families will pay the school. Okay. Where do, you, where do you get funds from? I assume that part of the money comes from the Aloha United Way because we're here on Aloha United We Stand, which is uh, their show. Well, the, the actual subsidy money, the funding for that, is uh, from the, uh, the tar Department of Human Services. Uh, we partner with Aloha United Way. There's a real integral part of uh, our program and getting the word out because you know, it's such a huge program, so well connected. We send out announcements to them for uh, an application period for Preschool Open Doors. Uh, and then they broadcast it out and, uh, you know, it goes out to all of their partners and mm. then we're... Get the word know, we, out. Yeah, yeah, we get so the... So that's yeah, very valuable. That's right. a good partnership. Yeah. Right. Yes, absolutely. So how many kids uh, right now are out there um, who you are helping in, in this program? Well, for uh, Preschool Open Doors, uh, our goal is to, this year, for this school year, the 2016-2017 school year, is to help uh, uh, 1,800 kids. Okay, statewide. Okay. Okay. Uh, we've got uh, some additional money this year. Uh, in the last couple of years, uh, we've helped um, you know up to you know around 1,200 kids statewide uh, attend preschool that normally wouldn't get an option to to a chance to to afford their uh, preschool. Yeah. So. I want to talk about that. I want to talk about you know 
exactly what is a preschool and where it fits in the social landscape. But one thing I want to clarify is that the people who you help are disadvantaged. Am I right? Do they have to show you a need? Um, for the preschool open doors program, yes. For resource and referral, no. Anybody can call us for R and R. Anybody mm -hmm. who wants to send their child to any type of child care can call us. We don't. You don't have to have a need for it. You just have to have a desire to want to send your child there. Mm, okay. Yeah. So there's a difference between the two programs. Yes. For my program, pre preschool open doors, you do have to be income qualified. So the, the age of the child and the uh, income limit. There are limits. Uh, for our program, uh, the income limits um, are set a little higher than most other similar programs that are out there to the state. So more people qualify for our program. Um, so we're, we're kind of reaching into uh, lower middle class too. Okay, uh, so we you know we encourage them to apply too. So they they normally won't qualify for other financial assistance for other programs, but they mm. may with us. Mm. Okay, so. You know, that's important to get out uh, to families too. And one, another key uh, important uh, piece of Preschool Open Doors is, that's really unique to our program, is that uh, families don't have to have what's called an activity in the business. Uh, they don't have to be working or in school to qualify. Uh, so it's a school readiness program. So you can have stay-at-home mom or dads and unemployed uh, parents. Almost homeless uh, can uh, they're eligible for our program because so they can apply and you know, there's no need for that activity other programs that are giving financial assistance <coughs> do require th them to be in some kind of training school or work so it's the parents need for child care uh, which, so that makes which it simpler the for you it makes you it go through that yeah well it's simpler for the parents because you never know what's going to happen maybe you get a job and then you qualify for a program something happens uh, whatever you get hurt injured and you lose your your uh, financial assistance for your child care or preschool where with us there's a safety net it doesn't matter that's not a that's not a part of the equation yeah. so that's what's really unique about our program is you know your child if you get into the program is going to be able to go the entire 12 months you pay the whole cost uh, no there are limits uh, there can be some out-of-pocket expenses <coughs> Uh, it's based on their income level uh, and which preschool they choose. So it can cover 100%, okay, depending on the equation. Mm -hmm. And uh, all, <clears throat> you have a list of preschools that qualify. Well, that's not all preschools that's, qualify. That's another good thing about our program is there's uh, over 400 uh, licensed uh, preschools across the state. So they, the parents have options. Okay, they can choose a preschool that's close to work or close to home or close to grandma or whatever, however they want it. That's okay with you. Yes, yeah. So because we're contracting with the parents, paying the parents, um, they can choose faith-based programs. Okay, so there's no issues with where they send their child. They, they have the choice. So it's, that's great. It's big options. So um, let's talk for a minute about uh, preschools. Um, what exactly happens in a preschool? And um, how important is it to have our kids go to preschool? Well, <laughs> there's, uh, I've got 10 good reasons right here. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're on the same well, page, aren't we? You know, the ch a child uh, from age uh, three to five, uh, there's 90% of the child's brain development. That's when that's happening. So it's a real critical age to get your child into an environment that's real uh, educationally rich, okay? It, socially and then also, is, you know, academically. So, uh, you know, kindergarten is becoming more and more academic. So this is a precursor to that. So it's real important to try to get your child into preschool to prepare for that. Prepare for kindergarten. You prepare for kindergarten. Yes, soon enough we'll have a program that helps you prepare for preschool. preschool. <laughs> <laughs> well, the earlier you start, the, the better off. And there's long-term benefits to that. Uh, you know, all the studies show uh, that uh, there are... You're, you're ready for kindergarten, um, you're, you're on track for uh, uh, third grade reading level, uh, uh, you're, there's fewer uh, special education placements. Uh, these children tend to go on to, you know, graduate from high school and go on to higher education. 
uh, less children are placed in special needs programs. So you have statistical on yes, it. Yes, yeah. The just kid goes, on goes to preschool, he's likely to do better. Yes. Not only yes. in school, but in life. In life. Very long formative time. years, right. so to speak. Right. Yeah. So it's not just the child that's benefiting, it's the community. It's all of us. You know, so if you want to get them early, get them started into these Should programs. Did you go to preschool? Yeah. I did not. <laughs> that was. Don't you wish that would have been you 50, had the chance? Yeah, Fifty-six yeah. years ago, would have been that would be I would have been in preschool. So no, I didn't go. In, in those days, it wasn't a big thing. It's different now. Now we have the data. You know, it's not just a latchkey thing. That's what you know. I worry about that. That yeah. you know, and this relates to what you do too, Jenna. Um, you know, I don't have time for this kid. I got to do other things. I'm busy. Yeah. So let's just put them in preschool and get get them out of the house or whatever. Well, it's to their, their advantage, you know, and that's a that's a, a real uh, important thing. You know, there people can be great parents and be really engaged with their children and and do a lot of the things that, that the trained professionals do in preschool. You know, are they getting the social uh, environment with that? You know, so that that's another uh, benefit. Ah, the social aspect. Right. They get so, to socialize right. they're, they're, with other kids. They might right. not otherwise do that at right. all. Correct. So they're learning how to interact with other adults outside of the house, along with children in groups and situations like that. So they're learning how to interplay. You know, with other children, uh, it, without you know, you would correctly that, that really doing does it, help. You know, without it being uh, adversarial. You know, I want that toy. And, and they, at that they, age, it's very important. Yeah, they sure. They're learning all of these social aspects that you know we need in life. Yeah. Uh, proper social. So aspects. this is the state policy. The state policy is saying we want kids to go to preschool. It's a good thing. We're going to fund that. Yeah, I, I, it's a program. I don't know if I'd call it policy, but uh, yes, that, so they're, they're making the funds available. Policy, yeah. It's important. They've recognized that uh, the early education community has worked very, very hard uh, to to get this into the forefront of uh, you know our legislators and uh, our and so it's you know it's come down into the the, the Department of Human Services has made this program available. Yeah. Okay. Let's go to the companion program now. This, so referring families out for child care mm -hmm. and that means what this is a different market different situation no um, preschool is still largely considered child care um, but for the resource and referral program we can assist families with children of any age from birth to about five so they call us even if they want to list 56 no. Oh, okay Just sorry <laughs> clearing that away um, <laughs> yeah so any child any age um, there's three main types of child care in the state of Hawaii that are licensed. So there's licensed family child care homes, so those are people who open up their home for So the child, child care goes business. to the home? Yes. Okay. So the families drop off the child at the provider's home. Okay. And this is while they're working and, Usually, and the child yeah. at this point is not in preschool. He's not or yet. she is a wee, wee little thing. Usually. Uh, how, um, how old is the child in this program? So in family child care, they can actually accept children up to 13 years of age. So and, and how young? Birth, usually. Birth. So it's really up to the provider. If wow. they want to accept newborn children, Would they can. do that? Give, give a child from birth to somebody else? If they don't have any other options, yeah. Oh, that sounds they have hard. to work. You know, I mean, wow, that sounds hard. I mean, what I mean is, going to the, your point, uh, Jim, about how kids are so uh, suggestible, so unformed at early ages. Um, don't parents want to spend every moment with them, especially at birth? Um, because uh, if you don't do that, you, you get a you get a problem, I, I believe. Right. Uh, yeah, I would say most parents probably do want to, but with a lot of the economic demands and stressors that go on nowadays, it's very hard to do that. If your business or company doesn't <laughs> offer paid maternity or paternity mm -hmm. leave, you know, parents don't really have options. If you don't have family members that can take care of the child, that's where child care comes into okay, play. Okay, so that's this program one, or that phase is phase one. What's phase two? Phase two, so infant toddler centers. So they can also care for children um, typically from a few months old to about three, and then preschool would be beyond that. Okay, what's the same situation <clears throat> where you take the child to the home of someone else and that person watches over the child? Well, infant toddler centers are center-based care. So oh, it's a center. Yeah, it's they're kind facility. of like preschools, but it's they're more than one children child that are younger. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And are the centers uh, separate facilities, you know, separate brick and mortar, or are they somebody's home? Um, the center base is an actual 
facility. So it's the same thing like a preschool. And actually, a lot of um, infant toddler centers are also preschools. So they might be in that same building, um, but they might have infant toddler classrooms and then preschool yeah, classrooms. Separated. Okay, yeah, okay. And this, and this goes to uh, the socialization issue because, uh, um, you know, it's good to start socializing mm -hmm. kids at an early age, makes them healthier as they grow up. Yeah. Right. Definitely. Well, keep in mind, too, when we're referring out, we only refer licensed uh, providers. So what that means, these people have gone through training. They're professionals, okay? So it's not somebody that just opens the door and says, okay, I'm going to start uh, accepting uh, And they get paid. Kids. Yes, yes. yes. So it's a when business. We, when we right? come back from this break, Jim, uh, I want to find out what they get paid and what kind of training they get and exactly how reliable can they be in the circumstance um, and how much should I rely on them if I'm a parent. Yeah. Okay, that's uh, Jim Eberly. He's not related to the Eberly brothers and he's not going to sing for us today. <laughs> not today. Uh, he's, <laughs> he's the preschool open doors program manager in Patch. And we have Jordana Ferreira. She's the Oahu coordinator of Patch. We'll be right back. You'll see. Hello, I'm Marianne Sasaki. Welcome to Think Tech Hawaii, where some of the most interesting conversations in Honolulu go on. I have a show on Wednesdays from 1 to 2 called Life in the Law, where we discuss legal issues, politics, governmental topics, and a whole host of issues. I hope you'll join me. Aloha, I'm Carl Campagna. I hope you please visit us this summer. It's a wonderful summer. It's actually a cooler summer than we're used to. But I hope that you come back and visit us and watch our show, Education, Movers, Shakers, and Reformers, here on Think Tech Hawaii. It's at noon every Wednesday. See you then. Aloha! How you doing there, lassies and laddies? This is Angus McTech here on Think Tech Hawaii, and on my favorite show, Hibachi Talk, with my good old buddies, Gordo the Texada and Andrew the Security Guy. Please join us every Monday. No, it's Friday. Every Friday from 1 p.m. to 1.30 p.m. here on Think Tech Hawaii. And you can also find us on YouTube, Hibachi Talk. Aloha! We're back. We're here. Aloha United, we stand. Our show at 12 noon every Thursday. And today we have Jordana Ferreira, Oahu Coordinator of Patch, and Jim Eberly, Preschool Open Doors Program um, of Manager of Patch. And uh, Patch is, what does that stand for one more time? People Attentive to Children. I love it. <laughs> Did you know a VISTA? Uh, VISTA is a person who is working in service of America, volunteers in service of the country. I love that. It's the same thing. Great acronym. Thank you. <laughs> we want to attach it, uh, the H uh, to say people attentive to children in Hawaii. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, this patch and the C H is children. So, but it, a lot of people don't put it together. <laughs> so we thought, well, we'll tag on Hawaii under the end of that. Okay. <laughs> so we were uh, before we broke. Uh, um, we were going to talk about. Uh, how you get to be training for a, a child care worker, mm -hmm. a, a licensed child care worker, and what you get paid if you choose to do that. So can you help us with this, Jordan? Yeah, sure. So it really depends on the type of setting. Um, for payment, it's because they are operating their own business, it's ultimately up to them. For family child care providers, the statewide full-time monthly average is about six to seven hundred a month. Mm -hmm. Per for, child. Per child, yes. Um, for infant toddler centers, that's the most expensive type of care. It's about 1000 to 1200 a month per child. <clears throat> so if I have the money, I'd rather have my kid there. Because why? There's more staff there? There's more expertise there? Why, yes. why is it more so money? So for infant toddler centers, it requires more work usually because they're little, little babies that can't really move or talk quite yet. Mm -hmm. um, there does There is a requirement for the student-teacher ratio is a lot smaller with infants and toddlers mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they're a little bit more demanding. Mm -hmm. So a lot of infant toddler center providers or even family child care providers that care for infants and toddlers are really focusing on meeting the social emotional needs, tending to the baby if they're crying, feeding, diapering, a lot of the health and safety stuff. Whereas in preschool, you know, these children typically can talk, they can walk, they can play. So they're a little bit more independent. So mm -hmm. preschool's focusing more on that independence uh, and guiding them and fostering them uh, in that. Uh, Whereas with infants, it's more about their social emotional development. Hands on, mm -hmm. so to speak. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, well, that's not bad. Well, how does that differ from foster care? Is that more or, or less or what? 
foster care is more like, so they have resource caregivers, which used to be foster parents. And so that's more like taking in a child into your home and sort of being that guardian. Stays over. Yes. Every night. Lives yes. with you. And, yes. they, and the, those families with foster children might have a need for our services. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. You could have a foster parent mm -hmm. who, Absolutely. who uses your yes. services. Absolutely. Yes, Either definitely. for child care or, or preschool, preschool or a yes. combination yes. of your Actually, programs. for our program, um, uh, children that are in foster care uh, would actually get a higher priority to get into the program. Yeah. Because they need you more care. somehow, mm -hmm. yeah. 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 At risk or underserved children always are prioritized for the, our, our program yeah, yeah. for preschool. That, and this is the, a judgment call that you make in your No, that's your part role? of the policy, the program policy mm -hmm. through the okay. Department of Human Services. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about training now. Is the training the same for all these programs or is it different? It's different. So for family child care providers, um, they do have to go through some type of professional development. So that could include a training class. It could include reading articles on topics about you know, their field or about child development or anything like that. Typically with center-based providers, they have a set minimum of hours that they have to complete. Mm -hmm. So I think for infant toddler centers, it's 30 hours to become an infant toddler center provider. Um, preschool. I can't remember the minimum, but they do have to take training classes mm -hmm. aimed at professional development. So if I want to join your program, well, I guess I, I do want to ask you, are, you having, are, are they knocking the door down? Uh, who's knocking whose door down about this? I mean, do you have more child applicants than you have money and spots? Um, do you have more uh, workers, child development, uh, child care workers uh, then, then you have money as budget. Yeah. Where, where's the pressure here? So statewide, we're actually at about 95% capacity for all types of care. So what that that, is, that means funding. No, that means slots available. Physi physical slots capacity. Available. Yes. Slots available. So okay, yeah. what that means is a lot of these child care facilities don't have much room to accept children. So the demand is pretty high compared to the supply. So we're not at 100% capacity yet. But a lot of preschools, a lot of infant toddler centers are struggling, you know, to accept children. A lot of places have really long wait lists. Um, we get a lot of parents who call and say, I need another list because there were no openings. So cost is the biggest reason why parents have issues finding child care and then it's openings. Yeah, but let me offer a thought, see if you agree, is if you have 95 percent, you know, then you really have more. Uh, in other words, uh, a lot of people not not getting the service, and that's because the there aren't enough facilities. It's funny; it runs a parallel to housing, doesn't it? We haven't built enough housing. Likewise, we haven't built enough childcare facilities, and uh, we need to do both of those things if we're going to service our population, especially our disadvantaged population. Well, it, it Patch also recruits. Uh, family child care providers. So we are involved with trying to uh, meet that demand. Uh, so we can, we have actually a staff member that goes out and people that are uh, maybe doing this, um, they're not licensed, maybe they're on Craigslist advertising that they'll watch children, we'll approach them, uh, try to get them uh, to come into the fold and be licensed, and we can actually walk them through uh, the licensing. So you would even recruit somebody yes. who is not licensed sure. to get them licensed? Yes. That yes, means so they get you, the training. You need people. You yeah. you yeah. don't have enough people knocking on your door as licensed people, and you have to go find them. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of reasons why that's the case. Um, one of it is for center-based care. There's a lot of turnover with staffing. Um, you know, if a staff member calls out sick one day, you have to still meet the racial requirements for licensing, and if. Racial requirements. Ratio. R A T I O. Oh, ratio. Yeah. Ratio. What is so that? So that's. So for preschool, it's one teacher for eight students. Okay. For infants, it's one to four, right? So if your staff member calls out sick and you don't have that teacher, sometimes that means you can't accept certain children. Yeah, so yeah. that's a big issue, too, in the field as so well. It sounds like the system is under a bit of strain and stress here, simply by the availability of assets and personnel. Am I right? I mean, we struck on something here. 
Yeah. Okay, yeah. I think, okay, we have. Okay, I'll take that as a yes. <laughs> well, we're doing everything we can to, to, to uh, address this, too. Uh, in addition to the recruiting and helping people get licensed, we also offer the training. Okay, for these folks. You do that, the training. Yes. That you were talking about, mm -hmm. Jordana. Yeah. That yeah. training, you guys handle that yeah. training. So then they can yeah. get licensed through, through the DHS. What's the licensing procedure like? I mean, is there bureaucracy involved? If I, uh, you know, read, take, spend 30 hours and read stuff and I want to do this and I want to get a little bread for my efforts and all, I got to go to the, what, Department of Health and Human Services? Where do I go? So it depends on the type of care again. So if you want to start up a home-based care, yeah, you're going to have to call DHS and get an application. Um, you're going to have to go through fingerprinting, background checks, all that good stuff to make sure that... Fingerprinting? Yep. Maybe I, I, I can drive an Uber taxi at the same time. Oh, it's a joke. <laughs> You could, I guess. <laughs> they require, or they people want them to require fingerprints too. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, yeah. So it goes through this, and how mm -hmm. long does it take? It really depends on the provider and on the DHS office. So if a provider is really quick and motivated, and they finish their parent handbook policy and their house is up to standards, and then DHS is able to get in there and inspect it, it could take a few months. Um, we have a lot of providers who. If you have a need. Isn't that a long time? Yes, it is, yeah. Um, and sometimes it takes people a few years. It just really depends where they're at. A lot of people are renovating their home, so if the renovations aren't done, they can't uh, get That'd licensed. be a condition of the license, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. In total, how many licensed uh, uh, workers are there, can you say, in the state? The family child care? Mm. On Oahu alone, we have a total of 608. Yeah. Providers total, yeah. um, statewide for all types of care, we have a little over a thousand. Okay, oh, that's pretty. So we have a couple of minutes left. <clears throat> Tell me where this is going. Uh, where's it going for Patch? You know, what, what do you see in the future? And where's it going for you individually, if you don't mind me asking? <laughs> Jim? Well, for Patch, we're going to continue on in our mission, and uh, we, if opportunities come up that uh, other programs that we might be able to get involved with, we'll certainly uh, go down that path. Uh, personally, um, you know, I've been with this organization for seven years. Uh, it's a great company. Uh, I really uh, like uh, what we're doing. Why? Our mission what, what is it about this? Well, it's, we're helping families, yeah. you know, needy families, uh, and uh, helping the community. So it's really when you're doing your, your job and it, you're giving back to the community at the same time, uh, that's a real good, you know, feeling to have. Uh, you know, you feel, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, we're meeting um, all of the the, the needs, you know, they're okay. put in front of us. So it's, a, it's, a, it's rewarding. Okay. So that, how do you feel about it? About Patch? Yeah. I like Patch. <laughs> okay. No, I love Patch. I love the work we do. I think for me, like Jim said, we're helping families in the community. But for me, the number one thing is the children. You know, I think when you have a little, little baby and you're there and you're watching them grow and develop, it's really amazing, you know, what they learn, what they're doing. And like Jim mentioned earlier, 90% of your brain development is happening before you turn five, which means that for the rest of your life, that's 10%, you yeah. know? So most of what you're learning is happening before the age of five. And it's really amazing when you can watch a child. Yeah. Do you get a chance to do things. that? Yeah, I have a nephew. He's almost okay. two years old. Oh, but in Patch, do you get a chance oh, to go um, out and see how this is yeah, all sometimes. playing out in the homes and in the facility? Yeah, definitely sometimes. We do have some staff members who go out into the home a lot more often than Jim and I get a chance to do, but... You're at the receiving end. Somebody else is, is Yeah, is I, just I don't get an opportunity to go into people's homes to see this, but, uh, you know, you see it with your family and friends, you know, with their children. Yeah. You know, the impact that uh, you, these programs have. The children are our most important resource. We have to take Absolutely. care of them and build them the best Absolutely. we possibly can. They are. They are you their teacher. involved in that. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, uh, Jordana Ferreira, o Oahu Coordinator, and Jim Eberly, Preschool Open Doors Program Manager at Patch. Thank, Thank you so you much. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Enjoyed it.